Find functional hilarity at the Biffa Emporium. Girl, it's what I heard. Allegedly, it's just the word. Allegedly, it's on the street. Allegedly, I sing to the beat. Allegedly, lee, lee, lee. allegedly, lee, lee, lee. allegedly, lee, lee, lee. allegedly. All right, let me watch and react to this video. So Cardi B is on stage, posed, ready to perform, and then out crawls Offset with white roses. And Cardi B is just looking at him like she wanted to hit him. She wanted to pop off. I almost wish she had, but I'm glad she didn't. I'm, I'm really glad she didn't. She doing that thing where you're not talking with your hand, you're talking with your whole arm. I know you're not doing this. She looked at his flowers like they were fecal matter. Fecal. Ah, I, I just pray she keeps this same energy. Stay this done, sis. Stay this done. She told him, take them flowers and wipe your ass with it. She's fuckless and fuck free. The way to be. I just don't understand how you got yourself pressed over praying mantis penis to begin with. But you know what? We all make mistakes in this life. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. It, it's, it gives me allegedly tease. There is no way Offset was able to interrupt her performance without her knowing. It's just bullshit. There is no way that with this level of security that concerts have, Offset was able to bring props and shit onto her stage during her set. That means the people around her ain't shit because somebody had to set that shit up. Like, you don't just magically get trunks with roses and messages on stage without pre-planning. I, I feel like this is free press and full promo. I feel like it's being milked. I, I'm getting contrived teas. This is giving me Heffa Scott Young. I mean, they just keep trying to browbeat this woman back into this shitty relationship with a praying mantis. This is the same shit they did to Simone, and Jackie was like, look, I'm going to keep my practice going so I ain't going to say shit. I, I have to say, at this point, I feel like they have broken up. That, I feel, is real. But they're trying to get a Love & Hip Hop spinoff. They're trying to have you follow the adventures of Cardi B on a reality show. I feel like this is nothing but bout the bag. There is no way he got that tribute to her on stage without her knowledge. It's not possible. Keith Sweat won't proclaim he is the king of R&B because he isn't. So that was a smart and classy move, girl, a smart and classy move because you might be up there, you might be a pillar, but I, I wouldn't call you a king. Maybe a duke, an earl, a baron. But no, not the king, honey, not the king. Now, according to Media Takeout, I don't know if it's true, allegedly, allegedly, they're saying that Monica will be replacing Nene on Real Housewives of Atlanta. Nene is very expensive. She costs the network multiple millions per season, plus moose feed ain't cheap either. You gotta have somebody running around picking up her shit, literally. And her antlers have damaged her home several times. That's why she ain't got no art on the wall. Because her antlers always be catching them little decorative accents she gets at Pier 1 Imports on the sale table. Mm-hmm. I mean, ain't nothing wrong with Pier 1 and the sale table. Just don't act like I'm so grand when you at Pier 1, girl. Like everybody else. You ain't at Williams and Sonoma. You ain't at West Elm. You at Pier 1 and Marshall's with me. Me. They also said her storylines are getting old. I agree. I mean, Greg and that swing low sweet chariot. <laughs> Y'all ain't got shit left to talk about. And Monica is jo and Monica's interested in joining the cast if the price is right. Nene might have been expensive, but hell, half Nene's money is a cute 1.5. I could see them locking Monica in for maybe half a million her first season, 700 her second, and then a million on her third. I could see them doing that real easy. And Monica's been dabbling in reality. She just did that uh, T.I. hustling shit. It's not pulling in housewife numbers, so you're not getting housewives money. And Monica knows I can go into the studio and record an album, but ain't nobody gonna buy it. 
Her last album came and went like Von Dutch. And you milked all your little nostalgia tour money this summer. You gotta wait a good five years to do that again. So yeah, I think it's time for you to go on Housewives. And that old third string basketball player she married to, he ain't even got a shoe line. He ain't even got a shoe line. Teddy Ruckus had a shoe line. So that lets you know, honey, you real sorry. Super sorry. What? All right, I'm on media takeout because I don't know. I like their lies. And they said that the real salaries are as follows. Tamara Maori, 2.5 million. Lonnie Love, 950,000. And the other two heifers is 200,000 each. Does that shit make any kind of sense to you? I mean, wow. They said that uh, the salary shit is causing contention amongst the ladies. I ain't surprised, but damn. I mean, damn, that's, that's low, 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 low shit. Don't get me wrong. I'll take $200,000. I'll take it. I'll shut all the up. But, but still, yeah, that's Tia making 10 times more than them. Is Tia that big of a draw? Girl, I guess. And I thought it was Lonnie's show, and Lonnie still... Well, shit happens. I, I don't know about this. Do you think it's true or just some media takeout bullshit? Oh, Lord, people only gave Kenya Moore $6,000 for her baby Ah! Now, in news that doesn't make sense, just plain flat out don't make sense... Nene Leak celebrated her 51st birthday. She's 82 in moose years. But she celebrated her 51st human year's birthday with Phaedra Parks. The same woman that tried to get your half-sister to talk shit about you on national television. Really? Re I wish the fuck. According to All About the Tea. Nene posted a picture saying, I got a lot of gifts, but this one takes the cake. Hashtag bring back Phaedra. I guess Nene is so desperate for a plot line and so desperate for this show to be sizzling hot again that she's willing to endanger her social security and her VIN numbers. I don't know, Nene. I hope you got life lock and Phaedra seems like she could wiggle and wriggle her way around that. Phaedra seems like the kind of girl to clone your phone, cancel your policies and whatnot. All right, we TV with they sorry asses have given us the first 12 minutes and 34 seconds of Love and Marriage Hip Hop Boot Camp. Ben said I keep ending up in the same space with women. Yeah, because you're supposed to be with a man, stupid. I can't stand a stupid sissy. I feel like that whole engagement ring, wedding ring ceremony with the empty boxes, I bet you that's gonna be like the first or the second episode. When the announcer said five hip-hop couples struggling to survive, ooh, that said a mouthful. The struggle is very real, and it's on WE TV. Shitty Boy and Heffa Riley, Little Mo and her indigent companion, Heffa Dime and that basketball player that she married, who apparently ain't doing shit, he ain't got time to be on the court, but he got time for this. So we got Sissy Fizz and 80s ex-girlfriend. All right, okay, I guess they gonna give us the LGBT shit. Cheating Walker and trifling Tammy. Everybody showing up in their finest rental car. Tammy, you may have been married for four years, but you only had a plot line for two. Lil Mo, Lil Mo, I know. You did not pull up in a rented Lamborghini. You ain't got that kind of money. You can barely make your 140 payment on your Altima. And you showing up here in a Lamborghini. Honey, you can't write that off. Little Mo has five albums? Five? I had no idea. I barely listened to the one. Tiffany show up without Drew to put some extra stank on they plot line. Drew was probably at the hair salon having his curls relax. Tiffany said, you might recognize me from Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. No. No, you're unrecognizable. We don't know you and we don't care about you. We barely remember your blip of a plot line. But Fizz was desperate enough to get that first season coin, so they decided to bring y'all on. She said, he runs away from our issues and he ices me out. Yeah, because he doesn't like vaginas. Y'all broke up two months ago, but you came here to work it out.
Uh, at least you letting us know, look, this is for a check, so single man, I am available. And that's really what Fizz is saying. Why the hell is Ricky Smiley here? Oh, oh no, that's not Ricky Smiley, that's Jessica's husband. Child! So Jessica and her man, they got the whole thing of, oh, we still engaged, we ain't married yet. I'm gonna tell you what they trying to do. They're trying to scare up some interest so Heffa Scott Young will foot the bill for their wedding. Girl, you better take that shit to the justice of the peace. Don't nobody give a fuck about you, and don't nobody want to see you marry Ricky Smiley. Ha! Huh. He like, uh-uh, she embarrassing the fuck out of me. She turned a dime piece in a minute. Honey, the cameras have stopped rolling. Mona is not giving you a chicken gift card. You ain't gonna get shit at Crown Fried for free. You gonna have to pay $1.15 a wing like the rest of us. Festivus for the rest of us. Oh, God, they really said, oh, this must be the Love and Hip Hop edition. Like, that's not why they called you and why you signed on. Come on. Lil Mo, you real lucky they did this shit, because trust you, me, you wasn't getting checked to first. Yeah, I, I wouldn't call you bitter, Tammy. I wouldn't call you bitter. I would call you foolish. And not even foolish. I think you are perfectly fine with Waka going and fucking whoever he want to, because you know he can't have no baby on you. Just bring home that coin. But you act like you're suffering through this relationship for a plot line. You are payola and sympathy. So Fizz finally got out of the chair at his local beauty parlor and strolls into the house. Child, do not say Lil Fizz has two albums. Oh, they really trying to big up him. Two albums, this number one on Billboard, that number one on Billboard. Girl, that was not on your own. That was with a group. A group. I, I want to see how much you got. How much do you have to show for those two albums and those number one hits? Because you look like you got around $4. $4. One, two, three, four. Four dollars. Tiffany, you gonna say, oh, thank God he's here. I didn't want to have to show up to his house. When you got to his house, all you would have done is put some conditioner in that head and dish the dirt as sisters do. And quiet as it's kept, y'all don't even give me click clack teas. Oh, and now Monice is gonna be their plot line. Oh, she's so disrespectful, the baby mother. Well, I hope they bring her ass on and I hope she whoops her ass because you know Monice is good for a skirmish. She's not really good for a mother, but she's good for a skirmish. I'll give credit where credit is due, but I'll also call neglect out. Oh, and here comes shitty boy and disappointment Riley. Girl, we have not been supermanning with you for 10 years. You had a good two and a half year run, maybe two years and seven months at best. You are irrelevant, you are impotent. No one cares, dear, no one cares. Now, Nia, Nia, he has not embarrassed you a million and one times. He embarrassed you, I'll give you up until the third time. That's when you embarrass yourself by staying with his dumb ass. You embarrass yourself by going on Love and Hip Hop, but this is the life you want. You like to thought and bop. Oh, and now they got a little back plot line and Nia apparently fucked Fizz. Girl. I don't believe it. Uh, uh, uh. Y'all is like, okay, we need to get something interesting. We got to cook something up. Let's say Fizz slept with Nia. And he's like, oh, okay, yeah, anything for a check. I, I don't even think that child is Fizz's. I don't think Fizz has seen a vagina since his zero birthday. That's the tease I get. He was putting the B in B2K. I think he's just upset that Omarion and Marquise Houston have moved on to greener pastures and left him in the dust. You were pass around bussy and now no one's interested in you. It's really sad. So they talk about Soldier Boy and uh, Nia's issues for a moment. They throw that fizz shade in there and that's where it pretty much ends. They drop a curtain, they see the judges and I guess I'll see you on January 10th for the bullshit. Girl, it's what I heard, allegedly, it's just the word, allegedly, it's on the street, allegedly, I sing to the beat, allegedly, 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 allegedly. So as my mug say, tell a kin, tell a friend, tell that heifer you hate, to head over to the Biffa Emporium for a cute collection of hoodies and mugs.
Link below.